Tonight, the search continues for the terror suspects who stormed a magazine office in France yesterday and executed 12 people. The two brothers suspected in the attack robbed a gas station today, located about 40 miles north of Paris. Right now, French police are swarming a massive forest in their hunt for the suspects. They're also knocking door to door, hoping to find leads. Counterterrorism experts say the shooting suspects did not act like typical jihadists when they carried out yesterday's killings. This is. New tonight at 6, a case of active tuberculosis has been confirmed at Rockville High School. A letter sent home yesterday says the affected individual is being treated and there is currently no risk of additional exposure to students or staff. The school also says that staff from Montgomery County Health Department will also be available at a future date to provide testing free of charge. Welcome back. You are looking at live pictures over Baltimore City Hall as hundreds of protesters have marched from Penn Station down to Baltimore City Hall uh, demanding to speak uh, with mayor and city officials. The film made over $400 million worldwide. How do you say that with the face, too? Mrs. Dudefire. Hello. Hello. Yes, that's the part I like the most. All right, maybe we can get Scott to dress up like Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Not likely. <laughs> Tonight on the Edge at 11, why a popular fast food chain is raising its prices. Well, tomorrow morning, singer Chris Brown is scheduled to appear in a D.C. courtroom on assault charges. Today, it was his bodyguard who took center stage. Chris Hollisey is accused of assaulting Parker Adams outside the W Hotel last October. Adams took the stand today and testified about what happened. Fox 5's Paul Wagner has been covering this story and has more. To France, it says that the co pilot of the German Wings plane crashed it on purpose. Now, French authorities say it is unlikely that it is terrorism, so the question is why did the 28 year old do it? A third American victim has been identified as Robert Oliver, and a mother and daughter from Noakesville, Virginia, also died in the crash. Now, this is Emily Selke. She was a recent graduate of Drexel University. Her mother, Yvonne Selke, was a U.S. government contractor. Fox 5's Sarah Simmons picks up the story from here. Thank you, Sarah. Well, these disturbing new developments bring up so many questions, including how pilots are trained and screened. Now, on the German Wings flight, investigators say that the pilot was locked out. So the Airbus 320 does allow someone outside to enter with a code, as seen in this YouTube video posted by the company. But a person in the cockpit can deny entry. Now, in the U.S., two crew members are required in the cockpit at all times. If a pilot needs to leave, a flight attendant steps in. But European airlines do not have the same rule. Some aviation experts suggest adding a third pilot or additional psychological screening. Today, the widow of a murdered high-profile lawyer pled for her husband's killer to come forward. Last month, David Messerschmidt was found stabbed to death in a hotel room inside the Donovan Hotel. His wife made an emotional plea to help solve her husband's case. The word me. Now, there is still no suspect in the case, but for the first time, police have said that the person of interest seen in the hotel surveillance video is indeed a woman. To Virginia now, where a baby in foster care is dead, and tonight, one of the parents has been charged with murder. David Marcusen turned himself into the Stafford County Sheriff's Office and was indicted by a grand jury on charges including murder and child cruelty. Investigators say 11-month-old Karan Mason suffered burns to his face, neck, and torso while well, Marcusen gave him a bath at their home earlier this year. Neighbors say that they were shocked to hear of the recent events. Well, here's a loaded question. Okay. Is chivalry dead? Uh, uh, Please well. say no. <laughs> Take a look at this picture. According to this picture, it may be. Do you see this? This image is making the rounds on social media. You notice the man is walking on the inside of the sidewalk, leaving the woman closest to the street and the curb and all that. And the man is always on the outside. He should also open the door. We appreciate your comments. Thanks so much for uh, tweeting us. I don't even let my wife walk. I carry her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so thank you for staying up with us tonight. I'm Lauren DeMarco. And I'm Scott Smith. Matt has the night off. We begin on Capitol Hill, where thousands came out tonight to celebrate the annual Memorial Day concert. But what many may not have been aware of is what Capitol Police were doing just a short distance away. Fox 5's Marina Morocco reports. Elsewhere in the county, a man pumping gas is dead after he accidentally set himself on fire. Firefighters responded to this gas station at Kenilworth Avenue and East West Highway in Riverdale this afternoon. They say the man lit a cigarette while he was gassing up. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition and later died of his injuries. In Montgomery County, firefighters suspect careless smoking is to blame for this fire in Clarksburg. It broke out this evening at this townhouse on Fair Garden Lane. A man was sleeping inside when his smoke alarm went off. He was able to escape safely, but the fire was so intense a second alarm was sounded. 
Several government leaders are weighing in just days after ISIS militants seized control of Ramadi, the capital of Anbar province. Defense Secretary Ash Carter did not mince words today. Back on American soil. Thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Sean Yancey. And I'm Scott Smith. Today, the country paused to remember the nearly 3,000 people who died in the attacks on New York's World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the plane crash in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. This somber day began this morning in New York City with a moment of silence at 8.46, the exact time when the terrorists crashed into the first tower. The silence at ground zero broken as the names of the deceased were read aloud. Then another moment of silence at 9.03 to mark the attack on the second tower. Of course, there was another attack at 9.37, this one on the Pentagon. Fox 5's Tom Fitzgerald has been at the Pentagon Memorial all day. And Tom, this is always a tough day for families. Well, as our Matt Acklin reported, the investigation into the deadly plane crash could take several days. But tonight, we're hearing some of the tower transmission calls between other pilots in the area as the plane went down. Fox 5's Emily Miller has that side of the story. Emily. Well, district officials have launched an investigation into why it took as long as 22 minutes to get help to a dying man. It happened last week near Georgetown. Someone called 911 to say a man had collapsed in a field. Paul Wagner has been reporting on troubles inside the fire department and is in the newsroom now with this story. Paul. Taking it back to breaking news in Fairfax, Virginia. This is a live look at the damage left behind following a two-alarm fire at a townhome. Now, it happened on Holly Hill Road in the Hybla Valley area. Three units were involved in the fire. One adult was at home when the fire broke out, and that person is being treated for burns tonight. A firefighter was also hurt battling the fire. He is being treated on the scene. Still no word on the cause of the fire. To Maryland now, and parents are demanding answers tonight after discovering issues with the water at an elementary school in Prince George's County. Fox 5's Lauren DeMarco has been following this story tonight, and she joins us now with the very latest. Lauren. And joining us out here in the Fox lot are some ladies that know the game very well. It's ladies from the DC Divas. Let me get these names right because you have nicknames too. I want to get those. Donna Wilkinson, known as the Animal. Hello. That is correct. She's also a running back. Uh, Okima Pickett. A running back, linebacker, no, uh, no fullback. 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 And then we have, of course, on the far end here, uh, this is Callie Bronson, and you are a uh, running back as well. Wide receiver as well. And yeah. a little bit of, they do a little bit of everything. This team is very good, by the way, undefeated on the season. But you guys had the opportunity uh, coming up in the women's game to play alongside Jen. Uh, how excited are you for this opportunity? For how, how groundbreaking is this? Uh, I mean, it's extremely exciting because, you know, women's, women's professional football, I consider it as America's best kept secret. So for her to do this, this is, this is bringing attention to the fact that, you know, not only do men play football, but women also do. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's a great day for the sport. And you guys, you, you'll have to forgive the horns. Uh, they're big fans <laughs> of the DC Divas. Uh, but you guys played alongside her. What kind of competitor uh, was she? I'll tell you, man, she's a fierce competitor. She's one of those players. She's got a motor, and she goes. I can still hear our defensive coach yelling, Walter, at the top yeah. of his voice. Because, you know, she plays on that edge where you almost think she's crazy. But she's a psycho psychiatrist, psychologist. So she does it on purpose to psych out her opponents, to psych out the, um, you know, the opposing players. So she's such a brilliant player, and she's so dynamic as a person. Big personality. So she can go in there, take that big personality, take all that knowledge of the game, and really just bring a special female dynamic to an all-male locker room. And, and people don't know what that is, but a female dynamic in football is something completely different than yeah. you see anywhere else. Because we're bringing pure football to the game. Right. It'll be interesting. All right. We're going to add a different dynamic to this interview. Toss me one of these balls. All right. Go deep. Let's spread this out a little uh, bit. Let's loosen on. things up. Let's see uh, come how on, you guys' guys. arms are. Um, all right. Here we go. I don't all right. So here's one of the big questions. Is people are going to say, how does oh, this no. go over in an all-male locker room? How, how well can she kind of rally the guys? And, uh, and be respected at the same time since she's blazing this trail. What do you guys think? Well, I think, like, her attitude and her charisma, it blends in really well. When you look at the NFL, these are guys where this is their full-time job. So it's their life, it's their passion. Jen, even though in her time playing women's football and so forth, wasn't necessarily getting paid to be there, she had the same attitude about it. Football was her life, it's her passion, it's all that she lives, eats, and breathes. So going into that, I think that, you know, people are going to feed off of that because that's what they're there to do as well. And, and she's going to bring hype to that locker room, but she's going to bring a lot of discipline and a lot of knowledge, too. So, you know, any of the guys that I've been around here that play football, when we start talking, they've got knowledge of the game. They respect the women that, that bring that knowledge to them. 
Well, and that's a big part of it. People are going to want to know how much does it really matter when you're down there on the practice field, when you're getting instruction from a coach. You guys know the leadership that she brings to the to the yeah. field. You know her knowledge of the game. Where would you say it ranks? Oh, she's she's got a very high leadership. I'd say that's one of her top characteristics. You know, her personality and the way she, you know, treats people is also very good, very dynamic. Kima, you can comment yeah, on that. Yeah, she, she's like a little fireball. I mean, when you yeah. see her, she's probably about 4 foot 11 maybe, but she has the personality of a giant. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you come up and line up against her, I had to go against her in practice, you know, because as a running back, it would be me and her. But I, when I first saw her up there, I was like, okay, who's this little itty bitty linebacker that she's going to take me down? No, she's like a Boom. pair of shots. Yeah. 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 Oh, same thing so. on special teams. I mean, there was a time I was on kick return. She was on kickoff. Full speed. Fearless. Fearless. Bla blasting at me. I'm like, OK, I got you. Next time I come blast her up. She got pissed. She's coming back. She will not give up. So she's going to make sure those guys never give up and that they stay really disciplined about what they do. All right, yep. so real quick, uh, do we think that this is a legitimate opportunity for women to coach in the NFL, or do you look at this as some type of perhaps a publicity no, I think, stunt? I think by selecting somebody like Jen Welter to do it, it's actually opening the door. A lot of people, I'm sure, have the speculation that it's a publicity stunt. But like I said, this is her life, and she's going right. to make it known yes. from day one that she's not just there just for the title. She's there to actually help them be successful, find a way to win, and to be a coach. Very yeah, good. She has, uh, she has the background. She has about 14 years of professional football experience playing in the Women's Football League, um, about five, four or five championships two and gold two medals. gold medals. Yep. So yeah. That's a pretty good it. resume. That so so more than just kind of the headline, yep. she's yeah. bringing some substance yeah. to she's the legit. field. She's well, legit. we're looking forward to seeing it, and we are looking forward to seeing you guys playing in the Super Bowl coming up August 8th from yeah. Los Angeles. Yes, yes. Sir. Taking on Dallas. I mean, it's Washington, D.C. versus Dallas. This is an undefeated D.C. Divas team. Make sure you, you follow them and give we're gonna them your support. They're going to kill Dallas. They're going to kill Dallas. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here. We've been waiting for some time to kill <laughs> Dallas, and the D.C. Divas are going to bring it home. We'll send it back to you guys. The trash taking here. Has already begun. I know. The trash talk. All right, so Father's Day is this weekend, and quarterback Robert Griffin III will be celebrating being a dad for the first time. That's right. I sat down with RG3 today. At five, we talked about how it feels to be a dad for the first time, the warm and fuzzies, mm -hmm. but now the nitty gritty, uh -oh. the practical part of being a papa. As a dad now two times over, I want to put you kind of to the test a little bit. Okay. So I brought some flashcards. And I just want you to tell me <laughs> what these objects are. Oh, gosh. Okay. Here we go. Okay. All right, here we go. That is the baby quieter, <laughs> a.k.a. The, the mute button. The mute button. <laughs> the pacifier. You're like, yes. take the pacifier, please. I would have taken bop bop or binky or passy. Okay. Uh, all right. What is this medieval uh, strange I, jacket? Honestly, I, when I went to this class to learn how to do this, I thought it was insane. It's putting your baby in a straight jacket. It's called swaddling, yeah. and it's unbelievable. But early on, it actually works. Yeah, I'm not for product placement, but you need to know this one. <laughs> oh, my God. It is, uh, I believe it's nipple cream. And um, uh, hang on. It's actually diaper rash cream. Okay. OK. Diaper but, rash cream. But there is that, too. There is nipple cream, and I actually had an experience. <laughs> we're pregnant. We're getting, you know, we're getting prepared for it, walking around. And they're like, hey, you know, we need to get some, some nipple cream. And, but we don't want to ask. No. So obviously, I it. was that guy. Yeah. And I walk up to one of the ladies that worked there, and I said, uh, I didn't <laughs> Look. yell it out. I yeah. just, hey, uh, do you know where the nipple cream is? Everyone <laughs> dies laughing. She, her face turns red. Yeah. I'm like, I was just, I mean, why are, why are we here right. if I'm not going to ask questions? That is a diaper genie. Boom. It is, uh, it works magic. It is. It eliminates the stench. Yes. Well, I call that the, the booger booger sucker. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> That's exactly. And what I think is. the other one is where you can actually you suck the you boogers You suck out the boogers, yourself. which I didn't understand do because you have one of these. I do, but I thought you were like these sucking are... the boogers into your own no, mouth. Well, it goes not. into a capsule. It goes into a capsule. It was very misleading. Yes. All right, last test. We're going to do uh Sorry, they're probably a little older looking <laughs> than they should be. Okay, she's crying, she's crying. On your mark, it's set, go. Here we go. You beat me. You beat, and mine looks, <laughs> yours looks fantastic. Look at that. That is great. You got to make sure you get it real tight right yeah, here. You don't want to cut go. off the circulation, but if it's no, too loose, yeah. she will poop on her clothes. <laughs> It'll get you know, everywhere. It will Absolutely. get everywhere.